Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning yourself. What time is it? Don't know, don't care. Mm -hmm. Where are we at this all night? Mm -hmm. Ever yeah. since the moment I threw you on the dressing room floor <laughs> and carried you off to bed. What a beast. Well, you bring out the caveman in me. <laughs> oh. Insatiable caveman. Yeah, primitive instincts, food, shelter, and to love, and love. Oh, yeah. And love. And just think, you didn't even need to beat me over, over the head with a club to get what you wanted. Mm. Not my style. I'm not going to listen to that. Showtime. No, no, no. Oh. Oh. Yep. We got to get up. No. Otherwise, we're going to give the cast and crew a show they're never going to forget. Good. This studio needs something like that. Well, waiting for trial to begin is worse than sitting through it. I was so glad the matron let me wait with you. I knew today was going to be particularly bad for you. Yes, Tina. Tina's going to be on that stand. I wish I knew what she was going to say. Well, there's one thing I can be certain of. There's only one person she's going to protect, and that'll be herself. You see, if Herb comes down hard on her, makes her crack, she spills everything, she won't give a damn what she brings down with her. Do you think that will damage your case? No, oh, I'm not thinking about this case. Well, what are you thinking about, then? my relationship with Max. I just don't want her testimony to ruin it. Deborah, you're, um, you're close to Cord these days, aren't you? Well, I, I don't know what you mean Well, by... what I mean is you've had lunch together, right? Well, once or twice, Gabby. Well, has he ever mentioned the, what Tina might say on the witness stand? Why? What are you afraid Tina might say? You know, I really wish I knew what Cord was thinking. I mean, he says he loves me, but I don't know. Yeah, has he said anything to you about me or our, or our marriage? Look, Tina, I'm very sorry. I've had lots going on in my life recently. I have not had a chance to sit down and talk to Cord. It's just been so weird since I got back. You know, I, I even tried to get him... Well, you know, I, but he said he wasn't ready and he went downstairs to read a book and that's just... It's not like him. But yeah, I'm just afraid he's never going to want me again. Is it that bad, really? Bad? It's worse. Look, it's so bad, I'm afraid the next word out of his mouth is going to be divorce. Here's what to do when you don't find the rainbows in this time. Here's where you go when it looks like the rain won't win. Don't cry. understand what makes you tick. What do you mean? You knew that your marriage was in trouble the very second that Cord found out that you knew Gabrielle had switched the babies. You should have stayed here then and tried to work out your problems, but no, off you went to Mendora. Well, I thought I should give him some, some time and some space so he could forgive me. But it didn't work, did it? And he stayed very angry with you. He wouldn't even talk to you on the telephone. So you should have come home then, but you didn't. Why? Well, whenever that happened to, I really wanted to. In fact, I made a reservation, and then I... I canceled it. Why? Because I didn't know if he wanted me to be here. I, I, I guess I needed him to ask me to come back. Oh, Tina. Tina! Well, and then the trial started, and then I couldn't come back. Well, now, that makes absolutely no sense at all. Of course it does. Look, Gabrielle is on trial now because she did something horrible. And... And I knew about it, and I didn't tell anybody, so now if I get up there and testify, then Cord's just going to be reminded of all those stupid lies I got caught up in. Caught up in? You were responsible for a lot of those lies, Tina. I know that. Look, I'm not denying that. I, I, I just wish Gabrielle had, had just pleaded guilty and this whole thing would be over. But now, no, I got a subpoena, and now I got to go testify, and my whole marriage is just sliding right down the tubes. Oh, because I have to share the spotlight with her. Ah, so Gabrielle is guilty, and you're blameless, is that it? I didn't say that, but I did not switch those babies. Tina, don't do this. What? 
You always do the same thing. You make a royal mess out of things, and then when you get caught, you quick turn and point the finger at somebody else. Or if it's too late to worm your way out of it, you sit there crying, poor me, and hope that everyone will forgive and forget. It's not going to work this time, you know. You will get advice from me, you will get support from me. You won't get one ounce of sympathy from me. All right, then give me advice. Is it too late to try to save my marriage? Because if I lose court again, I'm going to die. Tina, talk to him. Talk to him, be open, be honest with him, and tell him how you feel. I feel like I've already started to lose him to Deborah Medina. Why in God's name would you say that? Well, they seem to have gotten awful close these days. But then maybe I'm making more of it than there is. You probably are. What if I'm not? Is there something going on between her and my husband? That's the kind of night I used to fantasize about. I could have gone on forever. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean you're glad I didn't let you throw me out of your dressing room last night? Oh, every once in a while, your stubbornness comes in handy. Oh, I'm glad you realize that. Maybe next time when I tell you I love you, you'll realize I mean it. I will. I do love you. You are the most important woman in the world to me. And nothing, you hear me, nothing is ever going to change that. And if you ever try to get rid of me again like you did last night, I'm going to have to give you another lesson. Oh, good. Is that a threat or a promise? Yeah, you take it any way you like. All right, I will. <laughs> mm. But not now. we got to get out of here. Unfortunately, we got work to do. And I'm the producer. Not today, you're not. Uh, did Bo fire me without telling me? No, but I think he'd understand if you were needed somewhere else. Where? Maybe right here? Mm -mm. No. In court. With Gabrielle. Oh, Deborah, the reason I am worried about Tina taking the stand is that she has a way of taking things out of context. And she blurts things out, and before you know it, everything is tied up in a big knot. I see, but I mean, what has that got to do with you and Max? There are some things that have happened in the past. Things I really don't want Max to have to go through again, and I'm afraid she'll bring them up. What sort of things? Come on, Gabrielle, you can tell me. Is it worse than what you did with Brenda's oh, baby? Oh, no, oh, God, no. No, you see, Tina's specialty is telling half-truths. And when you put that together with Herb's ability of twisting everything around, you've got a major catastrophe on your hands. So, you're worried about Tina going on the stand and saying these half-truths, as you call it, and that will affect Max's love for you? Max's love for me is extremely fragile right now. I don't think he fully understands it yet. And I can't afford to lose it. You won't lose it if it comes from his heart. I don't think that he really knows where it's coming from right now. And then there's Megan. Megan doesn't make anything easy. She has already stated how she feels about me, and I'm certain she'll take any opportunity to turn Max against me. That's why I would like to know what Tina's going to say. Well, you keep going on about her as if she's out to get you. You're right. I am, I am probably overreacting. So, tell me more about Tina. Uh... Well, she's the type of woman who is always getting in trouble. She doesn't think of the consequences of her actions. She just does what she needs to do to get what she wants. She sounds very selfish. Yes, she can be at times. And I've never understood why. She has everything. She has a beautiful son, loving family, a very devoted husband. I can't understand how he's put up with her this long. Cord must be a very loving and forgiving man to put up with a woman like that. Excuse me, ladies. Court's about ready to convene. Are you all set? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Well, this will probably be the last day of the trial. So if we can make it through Tina's testimony, we might just get lucky and win this case. I think it's going to take more than luck. Well, maybe so, but let's get it over with, huh? <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. 
me get this straight. You want me to go to the trial? Well, if you didn't, that's all you'd be thinking about anyway. No, I can't dump my responsibility on the line producer anymore. It's his job to take care of things when you're not here. I want to be here. I want to be here for you. Look, you don't have to prove anything to me anymore. What am I trying to prove? That Gabrielle isn't important to you and that I am your number one priority. You are my number one priority. I know. Or at least now I do. So go to the trial and be with the mother of your child. I understand that. It's natural. I don't have to go to figure out what's happening. I can just watch the newsroom monitor, catch up. No. You put too much time and energy into this, Max, to just catch glimpses of the trial now and then. You really want me to go, don't you? Mm-hmm. Because I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I know that you love me. And you did a good job of proving that over and over again <laughs> last night. Oh, how much time we got? Hey, you said that you needed me and that you would never walk out on me. I mean, how can't I help but feel secure? So go to the trial. And you won't be upset. I won't be upset. I won't, won't be angry. I'll even have lunch waiting for you when you get home. How's that sound? How's it sound? That sounds like I'm the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Of course you are, because you have me. No, because I'm going to have lunch when I get home. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> No, I'm, I'm the luckiest man in the world because I have you. Don't you ever forget it. Mmm. 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 <laughs> well, you know something about Cord and Deborah, don't you? Or what is it? Tell me. I know nothing. Nothing. As far as I know, there's nothing going on between Cord or anyone, period. Good. Which is not to say that he's had an easy time of it while you've been away. Cord is not exactly the loner type, you know. He's very gregarious. He needs company. You know, he always says that an experience isn't really worth anything unless there's someone to share it with. Then good. You understand what I am saying. Yeah, I understand that he's been sharing some experiences with her while I've been gone. I didn't say that, Tina. Like, have you seen him together or something? Yes, yes. He did an in-depth interview with her for the banner. And that's it? As far as I know, yes. Are you sure? I mean, you're not trying to spare my feelings. Oh, please, honey, don't give me the third degree. I have told you everything I know. I'm just so scared yeah. I'm going to lose him. It seems to me you should worry not so much about who Cord saw while you were away, but what you're going to do when you appear in court this morning. Oof, don't remind me about that. Do you have any idea at all what you're going to say? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. No secrets and no lies. Tina, do you really mean that? Oh, yes, so help me God. In that case, darling, something good may come of this after all. What time do you have to be there? Uh, front 10. Oh, I, I gotta get going. Yes, you have to get going. Yeah. Uh, do you think you could go there with me? Oh, Tina, honey, I... Oh. Look, I'd like to, but Clint is coming home today. Well, it, it, it would be a real big help if you could. All right, I'll tell you what. Uh, it's early. He won't be back for a while. Uh, let me write him a note, and I'll talk to Kim, and I will join you at the courthouse. Okay? Oh, thanks. Thanks. You're the best. What's up, Herb? Where's Tina? I don't know. I haven't seen her this morning. I mean, she should have been here by now. Well, then she must be on her way. Yeah, well, the, you don't think she'd pull a no-show on me? I don't know, Herb. The whole reason she came back from Andorra was because you subpoenaed her. Well, I know that, but I'm afraid she'll have second thoughts. Well, I don't know. I guess she's on her way. And then you can get her up on the stand, and then you can rake her all over the coals all you want to. <sighs> uh, I'm sorry, Herb. Uh, I wasn't called for. No, no. It's all right. I realize you're angry with me and upset because I forced you to come back here from Andorra. Hey, at least you got her to come back. You had more of an effect on her than C.J. and I did. Court, I'm sorry if you're having troubles with Tina. I appreciate your concern, Herb, but, uh... Look, I'd rather not get into a lengthy discussion about my relationship with Tina. What I'd like to know is what happened with the judge. 
Uh, you mean, did I get him to grant Tina immunity? Yeah. I mean, that's the best way you're gonna get Tina to get up there and give her testimony. Well, she has to testify. She has no choice. Yeah, I realize that. But I don't want her worrying about incriminating herself up there on the stand and having to go to jail for it. You know, ever since you brought this up yesterday, I've been asking myself the same question over and over again. What could Tina possibly reveal that would send her to jail? I was just leaving you a note. Oh, about what? It's not important now. How was your flight? Fine, fine. How's the kids? They're wonderful, thank you. They'll, they'll be really happy to see you. Well, me too. And uh, how are things down at the banner? Great. Couldn't be better, smooth as silk. Court's been doing a fantastic job, given the circumstances. Oh, problems? Well, Tina's home. <laughs> Needless to say, they're having a bit of a rough time. Well, you didn't really expect that to go as smooth as silk, now, did no, you? No, no, I didn't. I, I, I don't really want to talk about that. How was old Arizona? Was it everything you hoped it would be? And then some. So you were right? It is situated in the same place as Buchanan City? Exactly. Exactly. It is Buchanan City. <laughs> They're one and the same. How exciting for you. Yes, you... You know, I... It, it was like being back there a hundred years ago again. I mean, I walked the same streets that you and I walked. And when you were there. I saddled, saddled up and rode that whole area. In fact, I half expected to see... Buck and Cody and May waiting to say howdy when I rode back into town. Are any of the old buildings still standing? Yeah, most of them. Of course, they've all had a facelift or two since, since then, but from the second I stepped foot into that town, now all the old feelings came rushing back. You remember when you walked into that saloon and, uh, well, you know, the day that Ginny and I were fixing to get married? Yes. Yes, I remember all of that. Well, I, uh... I couldn't help but think that... Well, how different both our lives would... would be right now if... if you hadn't found your way to me, if... You hadn't walked into that saloon, and if you hadn't stopped the wedding. What are you saying? You saying you wish that I hadn't stopped the wedding, that I had stayed in the future where I belonged? Herb, it's not that I'm afraid that Tina is going to reveal something. I I'm afraid that you're going to twist whatever she says to make it look like she was Gabrielle's accomplice in all this. Of course. And then you and the judge, you get together and you slap a, a conspiracy charge but on her. I told you, I'm prosecuting Gabrielle, not Tina. Yeah, but we have no assurance that Tina's not going to be next on your list. So all I want from her is a few straight answers. Herb, I'm telling you, Tina will give you all the answers you want if you can get her the immunity. Herb, please, you, you got to understand what I'm trying to say here. It will be much easier all the way around if she gets the immunity. That way you can talk to her and you won't have to rake her over yes, the coals. Well, I'm, I'm sure it would make my job a lot easier, but it's a moot point. I asked the judge to grant her immunity and he said no. Oh, damn it. I tried, Court. I really did. But he says she hasn't given him any information that warrants immunity. Oh, this is beautiful. I mean, this guy's going to play it by the book and make it a hell of a lot more difficult for everybody concerned. This is perfect. What does that mean? Forget it, Herb. I've probably said too much already. Excuse me. Hi, Tina. Hi. How are you holding up? Not as well as can be expected. Listen, I have talked to Herb, and he's already consulted with Judge Carlin. And? 
No go, Tina. He's not going to give you the immunity. Well, thanks for trying anyway. That's it. Thanks for trying. I thought you'd be more upset than this. Well, it isn't going to change the judge's mind, is it? No, I guess it's not. What can I do? And, uh, besides, the main thing is that you really went... Well, you really went out of your way for me. That means more to me than anything. Listen, Tina, when, when you get up there on the stand, all right, just relax. It's not like it was a crime, you keeping Gabrielle's secret about the baby switching. I know, I know. I just, I just want to get it over with. But having you here, it really does help. Now, now listen to me. When you're up there, you got to tell the truth about everything. You understand me? And don't let Herb rattle you. <clears throat> what are you staring at, darling? Of course. And Tina. I just wish I could work those two out. We have more important things to worry about right now, darling, like what Mr. Callison's going to try and get out of Tina on the stand. The court is now in session. All rise for the Honorable Philip Carlin presiding. You may be seated. Mr. Callison, you may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The Commonwealth calls Tina Lord Roberts to the stand. Tina Lord Roberts. to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, God? I do. I, Roxanne, take thee, Nick, to be my lawfully wedded husband, to love and to cherish, in sickness and in health. <gasps> Does this mean what I think it does? No, it doesn't. <laughs> My character on the show is getting married. Well, no, actually, she doesn't end up getting married because her sister barges in the ceremony at the last minute, reveals some very shocking information. One of those typical soap opera weddings, whatever. I was just memorizing my lines. Well, I think you should probably tuck those lines in the back of your mind somewhere. You might be needing them soon, right? Unless you and Max haven't worked out your problems. No, actually, we spent most of last night working them out. Oh, really? Yeah. What is this? Did Bo give this to you? <laughs> no, actually, Asa did. That's why I came over. I wanted to show you my Medal of Honor. Your Medal of Honor? What does that mean? Well, Asa played a little prank on me. He was putting me through this kind of trial and fire thing. See if I was worthy of being a member of the Buchanan clan. Happy to say I passed with flying colors. Well, this is definitely very nice. Is it an antique? Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? It was Asa's grandmother's, Blaze Buchanan's. Well, he certainly has accepted you, which means there is no turning back. Hey, who'd want to turn back? I'll tell you, life is never going to be boring with that family. I wouldn't trade him in for anything. Don't have to convince me. I've always been very happy to be a part of that wild bunch. And so will you be, very soon, once you tie the knot. Yeah, everything's set for the wedding, pretty much. I have one more fitting for my gown, and then, uh... God, I'll tell you, it is going to be just perfect. It's going to be the most beautiful wedding I ever imagined. Meg? Hello, Megan. You with me? I was just thinking. About what? Well, how would you like to make this a double wedding? Now, uh, having already established how you came to know about the baby switch, I'd like to move on to a few more pertinent questions, such as... Why didn't you tell Brenda McGillis, the mother of the child, that Gabrielle had replaced her living baby with Alicia Grant's dead child? Excuse me, Counselor. Did I hear you right? You knew about the switching of the babies and you didn't step forward with the truth? 
Mrs. Roberts, I asked you a question. Did you keep the truth from Brenda McGillis? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Even though you knew that by your silence you perpetuated a mother's belief that her child had died? I couldn't tell her. Why, for heaven's sakes, not? I really wanted to, but I couldn't. Gabrielle stopped me from telling her. Could you speak up a little bit, please? I can't hear you. I said Gabrielle stopped me from telling her. How did she stop you? I, I can't say. Your Honor, if I may be allowed to... No, Counselor, I won't let you continue from this point. I'm shocked by this revelation. I intend to keep questioning the witness until I'm satisfied with her answers. Your Honor. Uh, you're not going to object, are you, Mr. Callison? Well, no, of course not. It's your prerogative to question the witness, but... Now, Mrs. Roberts, I want you to answer my, answer my question, please. How did the defendant stop you from telling Brenda McGillis that her baby was alive? She blackmailed me. Speak up, please. She blackmailed me. What could she possibly have over you that would lead you to keep such a horrible secret? Well, it started when Sarah shot Austin. Only she thought that she had killed him. But look, you can stop right there. I already know all about this. Court confessed everything to you? Yes. And I think it was a terrible ordeal that Sarah went through. And she has absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. So if you think that you are going to drag her name through the mud because she's been raped, you can just forget about it because you'll be run out of town. So that's what he told you, just that Sarah was raped? Yes, that's all there is to tell. Hmm, what about the fact that Asa thought that she had killed Austin? Everyone knows that she didn't kill him. Well, now they do, yes. But right after Sarah shot Austin, Asa was convinced that he was dead. So he took the body up to the old mill road and buried it. And Cord was there to help. Not a very loving thing to do to a member of one's family, is it? I can't believe I'm even listening to this story. Well, it's true, because I was there. I'm waiting for an answer, Mrs. Roberts. I can't say it would hurt too many people. If you don't answer, I'll hold you in contempt of court. I'm sorry. I just can't say. Damn it, Tina. Come on, it's not worth it, girl. Will you tell the man? Vicki, how can you say that? How can you even think it? Just yesterday, I stood in that deserted saloon and thanked God for helping you find me. Did you really? Yes. The reason I was a attracted to Jenny was because she reminded me so much of you. I almost married her because of that. And because I, I thought I'd never see you again. Yes, I know that. I love you. I love you. And I love my life with you. And our life with with our family. My God, if I didn't love you as completely as I do, I, I wouldn't be fighting so hard to save our marriage. I was so hoping you would say that. I was so hoping you weren't coming back to say that, that we didn't have another chance, that our marriage was over. You read my note that I left you, did you? Yes, I did. Well, then, honey, you should have known that, that I loved you. I just needed some time alone. I suppose, yes, it's just that it's so very hard to be certain of anything these days. When I came back from the cabin, I was very frightened when you weren't here. And then Bo gave me a note, and I wanted to go right out to Arizona to be with you. And he told me that he thought I should give you some space. I think we both needed some space. Yes, but I'm very glad I finally called you. 
I needed to talk to you. I needed to hear your voice. I needed to have you come home. I take it you've... you've come to a decision about us. Darling, we cannot keep running away from each other. I've done it and you've done it, and it is not the solution to our problems. Well, how would you like to solve our problems? Is Roger Gordon part of it? No, Roger is not part of it. He's always been part of it, part of the problem. When you called me out there and asked about my... my coming home, I figured it was because you didn't want to lower the boom on me over the telephone. Oh, no, no, darling, no! I wanted you to come back so that we could work out our problems together. Roger has nothing to do with this. Really, Vicky? Really. Roger and I have only two things in common now. Megan and the centennial celebration. That's it. Does Roger know that? Yes, he does. While you were away, I had a long talk with him, and I was very frank with him, and he knows how, my fe how I feel. How do you feel? You are the only man in my life. You always have been. And you always will be. Scott's honor. Cross my heart, I hope to die. Then how about a welcome home hug? Oh, darling, welcome home. It's good to be home. God, I missed you so much. I missed you more. Why? Because I'm bigger than you are. <laughs> oh, Clint, prom promise me, please, that we'll never do this again. Promise me that we won't go our separate ways anymore, that, it, that if, we, if we have problems, we, we'll stick with it, we'll find a solution. You know, I think I already have. What? Found a solution, a solution to our problem. In fact, a solution to all our problems, past, present, and future. Honey, we just, we just have to start over. Just go back to a simpler way of life. Oh, sure. How? By going back to our roots. Goodbye, Landview. Hello, Buchanan City. You want us to move to Arizona? Yes. The whole family. Lock, stock, and barrel. <laughs> Mr. Roberts, sit down or I'll have you ejected from this courtroom. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I don't want apologies. I want silence. Now sit down. I'm going to give you one more chance to answer the question, Mrs. Roberts. But I'm not the one who's on trial here. You'll answer the question or I'll hold you in contempt. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I can't say. Please don't make me do this right now, please. We'll come back to this later, but I want you to think long and hard about that contempt charge, Mrs. Roberts. You can uh, question the witness, Mr. Callis. Well, thank you, Your Honor. You know, I, I really feel that you've demonstrated better than I could that Gabrielle Medina is capable of anything, including blackmail, to get what she wants. And uh, that she was perfectly aware of what she was doing. She was perfectly sane when she switched those babies. Mr. Callis. Well, I have no further questions. Your witness, Mr. Russell. Jamie, remember what I talked to you about? Hey, it's at the top of my game plan. Hopefully it'll turn things around for us. Well, Mrs. Roberts, how long have you known the defendant? Two or three years. Would you consider her to be a friend of yours? At times, yes. And the other times? We've had some disagreements. Well, I'd like to take you back two or three years. Back to the jungles of Argentina. Back to that hut where Gabrielle gave birth to Max's child. You were there, weren't you? Yes. What happened that day? I delivered her baby. And after that? Did she want to keep the baby? No. No, she didn't. She said it would bring too much shame on her family. Ah. 
But you, uh, you offered her a solution, a way out of her dilemma. I offered to bring her baby back with me. I know the perfect American couple who could take your baby. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Well, I did help give birth to him, and I... Gabrielle, I love him already. I love him so much. I'm sure that's why I'm, I'm so upset at the thought of you just giving him away. But this would be the perfect solution. I mean, maybe it was intended. Yeah, intended. I... Fate. Somehow, somewhere, Max was meant to have a child with you. Perhaps not yours and his, but his and my. The real natural father and his stepmother, the woman that he loves so much. Dina, you, you and your husband, you and your husband raised my child. But you lied to her, didn't you? No. But I didn't tell her the whole truth. No. Well, what was the truth? Were you married to Max Holden? No. No. But you let your friend believe that, that you and Max were going to raise her child. Now, now, and you also wanted to take the baby back with you back into this country. And you practically ripped the baby out of Gabrielle's arms, didn't you? No, I didn't. She willingly gave me that baby. But you deceived her. You desperately wanted to bring that baby back. Now, why? Because I thought I'd lost my baby. And I wanted that baby so bad. I wanted a family, and I... I wanted my husband back. Well, you got him back. Why don't you tell us how you did it? I pretended that that baby was ours. Tonight. Wait a minute. Yesterday you wanted to leave town. You never wanted to see Max again. And now you want to have a double ceremony? That must have been one heck of a night last night. Yeah, it was. It was fantastic. When we woke up in the morning, I don't know, I just felt like things were going to be different. I really did believe Max when he said that he loved me and that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with me and that I was the most important thing in his life. And I felt wonderful, and I want to feel like that for the rest of my life. Is this my... So, I am going to make a commitment to him. I... I want to marry him. Is this my sister talking here, my fiercely independent sister? Yes, I know, I can hardly believe it myself. And if you had said that I was going to say this two years ago, I would have said you were crazy. But I'm really ready to settle down with Max. Even if he's always going to be connected to Gabrielle through their son? I don't care about that. I don't care about Gabrielle. You cared when he admitted he still loved her on the witness stand. Yes, but you were right. He didn't love her. He doesn't love her the way he loves me. Hey, I'm very happy for you. <laughs> and I'll do whatever I can to talk to Bo and make the arrangements. I'm not horning in. No, no, not at all. I just... I kind of get the feeling that I'm not getting the entire picture here. Well, why? I get the feeling Max hasn't asked you to marry him yet. He hasn't. I'm going to propose to him. Really? Well, yeah. I, I think it'll be perfect. He's going to meet me at Max's place for lunch, and I'm going to have the food and the wine and the candlelight, and when the moment is right, I'll pop the question. You don't waste any time, do you? Hell no. I'm going to strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> So Mrs. Roberts, was the defendant upset that she had to give up her baby? Object. Sustained. Uh, will you rephrase the question, Mr. Russell? Of course. What was, uh, in your opinion, the defendant's state of mind at the time? She was upset, of course. She loved that baby. Because she thought the baby was born out of love. Out of the love that, that she thought Max Holden had for her. Object. Mm. Sustained. Mr. Russell, please refrain from putting words in the witness's mouth. Yes. Mrs. Roberts, did Gabrielle ever tell you how she felt about Max Holden? She wanted him to love her, but he didn't. 
And he made that very clear when he left Argentina. And she still loved him, right? Desperately. Desperately. Exactly. Desperately. Because out of this woman's desperation, she did what no woman in her right mind would do. She gave up her only child for the love of Max Holden. And that's an objection, Your Honor. Yes, yes. clearly addressing the jury. Sustained. Your Honor, I only have one more question. Uh, Mrs. Roberts, when Gabrielle handed the baby to you, would you say that she was at the end of her rope? I think she was happy that Max was going to raise their child, but yeah, I think... I think she'd pretty much given up hope. Because she, she gave her baby to the man that she loved, but Max didn't love her. Yes. No further questions. I didn't realize how much you suffered because of me. I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Just a minute, Mrs. Roberts. I'm not finished with you yet. 